Hi and welcome back to Geeking. I'm Jody. I was reviewing a thread on Reddit about the Python features which are not that well known but are super powerful and people should use them. Thought it's good to create a short list about them. This is not a tutorial on how to use these features. I'm going to introduce you 10 different features. You can just see it as a checklist i know this i know this no i don't know this so it's good to learn and practice it anyway let's be fast because we have 10 features to cover the first one is enumeration uh let me run an ipython ideally here you can enumerate your list if you have a variable like values a b c it's a very common case where when we want to go through a loop on this with having an index so we'll be able which index we are working on to combine them with something else to do different stuff here normally we define a variable which is i equals length of list or we do for i in range of length of list and then go through the list but there is a much easier way you can say for index and value in enumerate on these values print i and v and you can see it enumerates them this is very useful and much easier to write and much easier to read and it will show you that you are an advanced python programmer not an ordinary programmer just writing in python you should know the python features you can also do a start equals five and you will start from five so this is so cool another cool one is else block on loops this is a very common case you have a loop you are searching on your items you want to see if all your items have this specific feature or you want to find one specific item and as soon as it's found it is finished and then you want to see and you want to know if you found it or not normally our pattern is very ugly people define for example a variable called found set it on false sorry i don't have my pen with me set it on false very ugly then they go through all the loop they find the variable set the false variable to true then check if found is false print i didn't found it very ugly on Python world, you can do it like this. You can have an else for your loop. If the loop continues through all its iteration without breaking, your else will run. If you break somewhere, the else won't run. So you can write it like this. For item in your data, if is good, process it and break else print no good item found because this will run only if the for loop continues on all items without a break very clear very easy and when you use it everyone will know that ah i'm looking at an advanced python program the next item is called list comprehensions it's a very common case when you have a list and you want to do something on all the list members normally we write loops we say for x in my list do blah blah there is an easier way if you are doing easy things for example you have a list which is called one to three and you want to i don't know add one to each member normally you should create a new list go through the list one by one and then add one and insert it in the other list this is the worst case but you can do it, uh, you can say, for example, uh, n for n in x. This works one by one, as you can see, it's a normal for we always use. You are saying for n in x, return n. It is like this, the syntax. You say, I have a new list, square brackets, and for n, in x this is x return n so this will be the exact same list numbers but you can say i want n plus five 
and you will get n plus 5. In the beginning, this, this looks a little bit strange, but as, you, as soon as you understand this logic, that you are saying for n in x, return this. You will know how to do it. Write a few and you will learn it very, very quickly. This is called least comprehensions. The next one is f string. Nowadays, it's well known enough, but if you are not using it, it's time to start it. If you have two variables like age is 44, name is Jody, and you want to create a string about them, the best way is to use f string. You would do f and you have a string. You can have a normal string. Or you can have my name is name. The name variable will go here. So it is Jody. And my age is, oh sorry, age. And this will work like this. You can use print on it or whatever you have. At the end, you are uh, using variables kind of in line. And even you can do, after five years, you can do a formula there. So it is very, very easy to use, very easy to read. If you are not using f string, now it's time to start. Next, we have Eater Tools library. It's a very, very useful library. I suggest going through all the uh, Eater tools, know what they can do. But for example, one example is product. You have two different lists, A list and B list. A list is one, two, three. B list is A, B, C. And you want to create a product of these two. Normally for this, we write two loops inter nested loops. So you, you normally would do 4a in a list, 4b in b list, print a plus b. str of a plus b. Ah, we don't have a list and b list. Okay, this is how it works. So I'm creating all the products. Professional way is saying for A and B in Ether Tools product. I'm not sure if I imported Ether Tools or not, but if not, we will do it later. In B list, print. I was doing this. Now that I'm a professional, I'm using Ether Tools product. So I will use F string use a b okay import iter tools it's a standard library same thing with a much 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 more understandable and nicer uh, program so no iter tools iter tools is cool i even used another iter tools function data is one two three and you want all the combinations with the length of two in this data you can go with four subset in iter tools combinations of this data with length two print s it will give you all the different combinations of this data very cool check the iter tools yourself you will I wanted to say you will thank me, but you don't need to thank me. You will thank Python to be this cool. Another cool feature that some people don't know about is this one-liner if-else. For example, I want to check if age is older than 40. I tell the guy you are old. Otherwise, I will tell young. Normally, we write it like this. Age is 45. If age larger than 40 greater than 40 print old now what happened old never teach advanced python when you are still stuck in python 2 print young this is how some people write it but not me and you we write old if age is greater than 40 else young 
It's very cool. Practically, it says, old if age larger than 40, else young. Very nice. You can even use it with a print or whatever you want. You can say print this, so it will print old if age is more than 40, else it will print young. Also, it's very common, for example, you say found equals true if, uh, for example, count is larger than 10, else false. So you are telling it if count is larger than 10, return true. True if count larger than 10, else false. For sure, we don't have a count at the moment and we will get an error, but no problems. Another important thing is Patlib. This is a very good standard library. If you want to work with file names, paths, find where your file is and other stuff, you can just import Patlib and then you are able to work with the paths. Why this is important? Because this makes Python portable. If you are writing your program on Linux, and you don't use Patlib, maybe when you are moving your program to Windows, it won't work because Windows path is different than how it works in Linux. Same thing with Mac, other Unixes. If you are using Patlib to find out where your program is, where you can find the path, where you can create a temp file, it would be very, very easy to port your system to other uh, operating systems. Very useful and very straightforward. Another Important thing is decorator. Sometimes we use decorators, but seldom we write decorators unless you are a pro. Try it once. It's very, very easy to understand how it works, but you should read it. It's larger than what I want to cover here, but I wanted to give you a hint to go and check decorators and write them. The simple idea is having a function which wraps another function. So whenever I use do twice, it gets a function name and runs it twice. So if I have a function which is called print name and if it prints hi Jadi, I can decorate it with my do twice function. So whenever I'm calling this, the function will go through this wrapper and it will run it twice. So now, now if I do print name, I will get this Twice. It's very useful because you can write a wrapper which logs your data, for example, the input data you are giving to your function. Or you write a function which saves, sets the time when this function started. Or you write something to, I don't know, save, authenticate. Very, very useful use case is authentication. If you are using something like a Django, you have seen it. We use this, but we don't write this normally. If you have an authentication function, decorating this function, you always say, if this was going to run, check this first. So you should be able to authenticate first. If not, do blah, blah, blah. Check decorators. It's very nice and it's easy to write. You can do it. And the last part is map, filter, and zip. If you are telling me why you used iterator in two slides, I have three cool things in one slide. These are methods to make your life easier and faster. Map will get a function here and then a list here and we'll run this function on all uh, items in this list. For example, you can define a lambda function x. Lambda functions are inline quick functions you can write. This is another point you should know. Lambda x, which called lambda x, equals x uh, multiplied by 2. So I have a quick function here and I have a list here. My map will run this function on all of these items. So if I do with lambda x is x2 and I have a list here, I run it, I will get an iterator. So if I want to, for example, use it, I can say for x in this data, print x. And it will run this one by one on the items. You can define another function somewhere and just give the function name here. You don't need to uh, use a lambda function. 
Another useful thing is filter. You say filter this data. You say filter with this function on this data. It will check one by one if giving this item to this function returns true. If yes, this will pass and will be in the result. If this gives false, this won't be in the result. So for example, I can have a function for it gets age and I can say true if age is more than 30 else false. So this will return true if age is more than 40. And then I will tell it run this on this one. It will give you a filter which is iterator. I can say for uh, i in this data print i and it filters out whatever doesn't return true in this list. And the last part is zip. It's just like zip. So it will combine two things or even more things in one place. You can say zip this data Jody and Sara, this data, the ages, for example, 44 and 40. This data, it's their sex, I'm unknown and female. And you can say for name, age, and sex, print name, age, and sex zips data. It's a very common case. Sorry, what happened? Yeah. In. It's a very common case. From different databases, you get different data and you want to combine them with each other. You want to zip them. So map, filter, and zip. Do a quick practice and you will master them easily. And this was it. This program is called Present. If you search for Present, Python, it's a nice presentation tool based on a markdown file, which is very easy to use and create something quick. And one more, which is the debugger. Whatever language you are using, it's very good to know its debugger. If I create a small file, temp py, I say print hider, I'm starting. Say age is equal 44, then send if age is larger than 40, print old, else, print young, whatever. And if I want to debug this somewhere, I can just add breakpoint. Now I can debug it easily. If I, if I say Python run this program, it will start the program. As soon as it reaches this debug line, it opens a Python debugger here. So now program is stopped and I can give it commands. For example, if I give it, give it L, it will list the source. I'm here. I can say check the age value. It says, okay, 44. So I say next line. It says, I jumped to the print old. It says, okay, jumped here. So age was 44, so I jumped here. See, I can debug in the middle of the program and see what is going on in this specific part. When fixed, or I can say continue, just continue running your program. You should learn this debugger. Go for it. Now, you can consider yourself a advanced, an advanced Python programmer. If you practice. Have fun. I was Johnny. Subscribe, please.